Hi, today we're going to be looking at what is credit, and we'll look at some of the advantages and disadvantages of using uh, credit as a financial tool. And we'll talk a little bit about uh, the difference between using credit and being debt free. Uh, to start, what is credit? Credit is simply borrowing money you don't have uh, with a promise to pay the money back and more in terms of interest at a later date. Uh, and many, many Americans use credit on a daily basis. Uh, data from 2015 shows that on average, the US, average U.S. household owes about $15,000 in credit card debt. They have about $172,000 in mortgages, nearly $30,000 in auto loans, and $50,000 in student loans. Not every family has these kinds of debts, but on average, this is what we see. So clearly, Americans are using uh, credit substantially as a financial uh, vehicle to make purchases and live their lives. It's important to remember that credit is not free. That is, it is not free money. It comes at a cost, and you have to give something up in order to get it. So when making decisions about whether to use credit or not, you should be aware of the opportunity costs. The most important one being a reduction in your spending power, especially if you don't pay off your bill in its entirety every month. If you end up having to pay interest, it's going to take away from money you can spend on other things in the future. And that's true for uh, car loans and home loans in particular, which tend to last multiple years. That Those interest payments do have an effect on your ability to buy other things in the future. Uh, the way to think of it is that the bill always comes due. You cannot borrow money for free. You cannot avoid paying interest. You have to pay what you borrowed and more comes with it. You can't use credit as a way to create magic money that you didn't have. You always have to pay it back. Ideally, being able to pay for things with cash up front is always the cheapest way to purchase something uh, in the long run. There are some positives to using credit, things to keep in mind. One of the first is that it gives you quicker gratification. You don't have to wait to get something. And in some cases, if you're not financially prepared for an emergency, you don't have time to wait. So credit can be a way to get what you need right now when you need it. Credit also provides a certain degree of convenience, especially if you're trying to rent a hotel room, if you're trying to buy something with money you don't quite have yet, but will have soon. Uh, if you want to rent a car, get a, uh, an apartment, having a credit card, having a, a credit history makes life easier in the modern American economy. Credit or debit, really plastic purchases, help you with online purchases. You cannot use cash and you cannot really use checks to buy things off of Amazon. So you need some sort of plastic form of payment. Typically, most people use credit cards. Credit also generally provides a certain degree of purchase protection because many credit companies will increase uh, warranties on products that you purchase. So maybe your product has a one-year limited warranty. We buy it with a credit card. They'll extend it by a year, and now you have a two-year warranty. You do receive bonuses in terms of cash back, miles, or points that allow you to purchase other things, uh, and many people like those as part of their credit card uh, usage. There are negatives to credit, things to keep in mind though, as you balance the positives. One of the negatives is debt. If you don't pay off all of your credit card each month, then you have to begin to find the money to pay off what you've borrowed in the past, plus what you're borrowing in the future, plus any interest that you owe. Credit does lead to overspending. Studies have shown that people who use plastic payments, credit or debit cards, tend to spend between three and 5% more than those who use cash. And there's a lot of reasons as to why. Um, but the main one being that people have a psychological uh, experience when they use cash that creates uh, sen a sensation of pain. And, uh, and as a result of that sort of pain sensation, people don't like to give up cash. So if, only ha if all they have is cash to spend, they tend to spend less of it. Uh, another negative of credit, which goes along with debt, is the fact that you have to pay interest on any debts that you do not pay in full uh, at the end of every month. There are fees associated with credit, particularly if you have a late fee uh, or if you spend more than you're allowed to on your, on your credit card, you go beyond your limit, there are significant fees that you may have to pay. Another negative is the time that it takes to repay your debt. If all you do is pay the very minimum amount due each month, 
then it could take you years and years and years to pay off uh, even the simplest of purchases. And finally, you have to worry about the, uh, the possibility of identity theft. There's no one's identity that's going to get stolen when you use cash, um, except for Benjamin Franklin or George Washington or Abraham Lincoln. But your identity cannot be stolen when you, when you use cash. But once you start using plastic purchases, as we've seen in recent history, uh, names, social security numbers, addresses, phone numbers, account information can be stolen and is stolen on a pretty frequent basis. Debt is not something that you have to go into to function in a modern American society. And in fact, um, there are alternatives to borrowing in order to purchase things. Um, one way to think of it is that in order to purchase something that's large, like a car, uh, you have to make payments, and that's a reality. Very few people just suddenly stumble into $26,000 in cash. They have to make payments for the car. The question is not whether you make payments, but who will you be making payments to? The traditional way is to pay the bank by taking out a loan and purchasing the car when you need it, and making payments after you purchase the car with interest. An alternative might be to identify when you need a new car, maybe four years into the future, make uh, payments to yourself in, in the form of uh, savings, which are interest-free, and then when you have saved each month the amount that you need to be able to pay the car, when it comes time to buy the car, you just write a check and you own it. There are two different ways of approaching it. Uh, one has a significant opportunity cost, however. When you look at the average amount that it costs for an American to buy a car, the average car payment is approximately $600 a month, and it's a, for a 48-month loan, which you can do, uh, and many people do. The alternative, though, might be to identify four years out that you're going to need a new car and begin to put that $600 into a, uh, a savings account. After about 25 months, you'll have accumulated $15,000, which will essentially buy you uh, a used version of the same car you would have bought with a loan. Once you've bar purchased the used car, you could continue to put the $300 or $600 into an investment account each month for the rest of the 23 months that you were willing to pay to the bank. And if you put that in an investment account that got an 8% rate of return, which is approximately the market average over the last 100 years, you'd have $64,321 after 20 years of investing. So there is an opportunity cost here. You can take the money and invest it for yourself, or you can pay interest to the bank. Either one works. One is obviously more advantageous to you in the long run, and one is easier for you in the short run, and that decision is up to you to make. There are benefits to being debt-free that you should consider when making a financial plan. Um, one of them is that it gives you financial security in the sense that no one can repossess a car that you have already purchased and that you own outright. You don't have to worry about losing your house if you own your house outright. Um, but when you're using loans to purchase those things, if you fail to make payments, then those, uh, those items can be taken from you. Being debt-free helps you lower your financial anxiety because you have the resources available to be able to make purchases. You don't have to worry about how you're going to find the money to pay for something because you already own it. It does make purchases less expensive as well because there's no interest involved because you're paying yourself and not the bank. And because you're debt-free, it enables you to take any money you don't spend and put it towards your own savings instead of putting it towards uh, interest payments. And finally, and probably the most important, it forces you to have a financial plan because you have to know where your money's going, how much money you're going to need, where are you going to spend it. And having that plan enables you to not only overspend, but enables you to uh, save and invest, whereas without a plan, it's much more difficult to do so.